the Christian Orthodox world did not commit aggression against the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire was constantly at war. It was an empire that was built for war. And it had intervals of peace during the winter months when they would prepare themselves for when spring will come and then back to the battlefield. That was the Ottoman Empire. That is not Islam. In Islam, you wage war in response to aggression. In Islam, you wage war to liberate the oppressed when they, the oppressed, are begging you to come and liberate them. They must ask you to come and liberate them. Then you are allowed to wage war, and only when you have explored and you have exhausted all possible peaceful means to resolve the problem and you have failed, only then do you, are you allowed to resort to war. That was not the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire waged unjust war on Orthodox Christians for 500 years. And it is time for us to denounce them for their unjust wars, their oppression against the Christians. But not only, not only that, it seems to me as though there, is a, there was a sinister explanation behind the conduct of the Ottoman Empire. That the Antichrist, or Dajjal, in his day, which is like a year, the first stage of his mission, you know his mission is comprised of three stages before he appears in person. As a Jew, as a young man powerfully built, to stand up in Jerusalem and to declare that I am the Messiah. When he would not be the Messiah, the Messiah is Jesus, the son of Mary, who will return. But this is the false Messiah. So he has to pass through three stages before he will appear in our world of space and time as a human being from Jerusalem. In stage one, in my book, uh, Jerusalem in the Quran, in stage one, I have mentioned that he created Britain as a ruling state to do his dirty work for him, to eventually rule the world from Jerusalem. So he begins by ruling the world from Britain. That's how we have Pax Britannica. But at the same time that he created Britain as a ruling state to do his dirty work for him, at that same time, within the world of Islam, the Antichrist created the Ottoman Empire to rule the world of Islam for him and to do his dirty work for him. And so it was not an Ottoman Islamic empire. It was an Ottoman empire created by Dajjal, the Antichrist, to do his dirty work for him. And the first stage of that dirty work was unjust war against innocent Christians in Eastern Europe. And more and more people in the world of Islam are now beginning to accept this version of history, which I am now explaining, because of Islamic eschatology, which is different from what has been written these last 500 years. Not only did the Ottomans wage unjust war on Orthodox Christians, they never wage war on Western Christians. They never wage war on Britain. They never wage war on France. No. They never wage war on that Christian world which is going to ally itself with the Jews. They wage war only on Rome. That's why we say they were acting on behalf of the Antichrist. Not only this, but uh, they put some salt on the wounds when they would wage war on Orthodox Christians and defeat them. Then as part and parcel of the truce or the ceasefire, there would be an agreement for the defeated people to pay tribute or unfile tribute. And the agreement for tribute would include that they had to hand over a certain number of their boys to the Ottomans, Christian boys. This 
is history. It cannot be removed from the history books now. Don't try to do it. It's part of the history. And they would take these Christian boys, and don't give me that nonsense that the mothers and fathers were only too happy to hand over their Christian sons to the Ottomans. That's rubbish. I don't want to hear that rubbish. It was Christian boys being handed over to the Ottomans, and these boys would then be converted to Islam by force to become Muslims, and shame, shame, shame on the Ottoman Empire for violating Allah's law in the Quran. La ikraha fid deen. There is no compulsion in religion. That's what Allah says in the Quran. That's Islam. That's not the Ottoman way. Shame on the Ottoman Empire. Shame, shame, shame on the Ottoman Empire for taking Christian boys and converting them to Islam by force. And then having, training these boys to become the elite fighting force of the Ottoman army, the Janissaries. Shame on the Ottoman Empire. This was not Islam. And we denounce it. So when the Ottoman army will go to attack a Christian people, it will be their own sons who will now be the elite fighting force on that Ottoman army. Not only that, they added more salt to the wounds. When they would defeat a Christian people, they would enslave Christian women. Where did the slavery come from? Is it sanctioned in the Quran? Is it sanctioned in the, in the Sunnah of the Prophet? Where, where, where did this slavery come? They would enslave the Christian women. That's what the Ottoman Empire did. And thank Allah that I have the freedom to speak. They would enslave the Christian women. And then the Ottoman sultans would never marry. They would have these women is what the Quran calls milk al -yameen. And uh, they would have children with these concubines, the harem. And these children would eventually, one of them would become the sultan. The Ottoman sultans never married. No. <laughs> they wanted to have sons from Christian women. And so the sultan who will come to attack you will be your own son, son of your own Christian woman. How did they get this slavery? Does Islam, does, does Islam condone this slavery? Not at all. It is only when the enemy enslaves their prisoners of war, only then are we Muslims allowed on the basis of the law of reciprocity to enslave our prisoners of war. Tell that to ISIS for me. Tell that to ISIS for me. We are not allowed to enslave any prisoner of war if the enemy is not doing that. That's not in the Quran. That is not a part of the way of the Prophet. And so what the Christian, what the Ottoman Empire did in enslaving Christian women and having them in the harem and having children with them and one of those boys who become the sultan was not a part of the religion of Islam. Shame, shame, shame on the Ottoman Empire in using these women as their milk al -yameen. Ottoman Empire did more than that. In order to add even more salt to the wounds so that the, the wound plunged into the back of the Orthodox Christians would bleed and bleed and bleed for 500 years or more. What they did was to take the caliphate or the khilafah, the head of the world of Islam, the khilafah or the caliphate, out of the Arab world and take it to the capital of Rome, Constantinople. So this which was the capital of the Christian Orthodox world now becomes the capital of Islam. That was not by accident. That was meant to destroy, destroy whatever integrity there was in the Orthodox Christian world. And so now the emperor, the sultan of the Ottoman Empire calls himself, I am the sultan of Rome, Kaiser of Rome. What rubbish. And that's what they had to recite in the Friday sermons. 
in the masajid around the world of Islam. And that was rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. He's now the case of Rome or the Sultan of Rome. He's not. He's not. When they took Constantinople, they did the worst thing of all. Hagia Sophia, the cathedral, which had functioned as the cathedral par excellence of the Orthodox Christian world for 1,000 years, Hagia Sophia, in Constantinople. And to the eternal shame and eternal disgrace and everlasting embarrassment of the world of Islam, the Ottoman Empire took that building, Hagia Sophia, the cathedral of Hagia Sophia, and sinfully, disgracefully, changed it into a masjid. Never in the history of Islam have we ever been so disgraced by a people as we were disgraced by the Ottoman Empire. And so what we say to you today is that the conduct of the Ottoman so-called Islamic Empire was not representative of the, of the Quran and of the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him.